So thank you all for tuning in tonight for the first of our uh, cocktail hour chats with Ninth Biennial Artists. Um, this is really all our, our alternative format for the reception we usually have, which is usually a lot of artists and public attending our opening reception for the Governor's Biennial and having lots of little chats. So um, this will take place most every Tuesday for the next nine weeks. Um, one week, the week of June 3rd, we're switching from a Tuesday to Thursday. Um, so note that, but otherwise, um, we'd love to have you tune in every week um, for our cocktail hour from 5.30 to 6.30 Central, 4.30 to 5.30 Mountain Time, um, which covers the state. So if you're outside of the state, you'll have to look that up. I don't know what time it is where you're at. <laughs> um, but the South Dakota Governor's Biennial Art Exhibition has been around since 2003. Um, that's when the first biennial was launched. So every couple years, we organize this touring show. Um, there has, I think, through the course of it, always been a juried component. So it's an exciting opportunity for emerging artists and really seasoned professionals to all submit their works for an exhibition. Um, and the, the goal of the, the exhibition is really to recognize and encourage South Dakota artists um, to promote the artistic identity of South Dakota, to celebrate the cultural and artistic heritage and future of the state, and to encourage a larger sense of community and connection across the separate artistic communities in the state. Um, so I'm really excited about this format. I, I was able to choose, you know, we had 30 of our 66 artists in the show willing to do this with us. So we get a chance to hear from a lot more artists than we're usually able to. Uh, it was fun for me to group the artists that were willing to participate with us into subsets. Um, so what I tried to do um, with all 30 artists is find some sort of common thread across the works and the groupings of artists we'll hear from. Um, so every, every week we'll hear from three, three or four artists. A few, a few weeks we'll have four artists to fit everybody in. Um, and this, this common thread I found for these three artists is um, they're all landscape painters. They have really diverse, I think, styles and practices, but um, the, the theme of, an, of agricultural landscapes come, come into play in all of their works in one way or another. Not necessarily every single painting they make. Like Karen was saying earlier, she doesn't put sheep in all of her paintings. Um, so I do think of them as primarily landscape painters uh, with really diverse styles, but they address themes of agricultural practice within their, their works a lot of the time. So um, with that, I'll keep it short and sweet. And I think we're first we're going to hear from um, Jesse Rashi, and then we'll hear from Karen Kinder, and then we'll hear from Paul Peterson. Um, so these are all artists living and working in our state right now, as are all of the biennial artists. So I hope you enjoy hearing a little bit from each of them. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll sh let them share for a little bit, um, 10 to 15 minutes about their work, and then we'll save time at the end. Um, and try to do like a rapid fire kind of question and answer thing. So if you have questions that pop up in your mind through the course of their talks, um, go ahead and throw that out in the chat. Um, and at the end, we'll try and kind of rotate. Feel free to make your questions specific to one artist or to all of them if you're curious about how something operates across all of their practices. And Carolyn Hart, our wonderful marketing coordinator and tech Zoom coordinator extraordinaire will help me um, pose those questions for them at the end. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and, um, and bring Jessie Rashi to the screen. And I think she's got a little bit of a, a PowerPoint to share. Thanks, Jessie. Thank you. This is such an honor being here and um, I love it. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I will share, let's see. So I'm just going to share some of my work, um, kind of where I've come from and where I am right now. And sorry, this is going to take me a second to view this. Okay, so can you all see? It just says Jesse Rashi. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, entitling this. I just, I love painting people. I love painting animals. And almost all of my paintings have living, living things in them. <laughs> I guess all of my paintings do. And so this is the painting that's in the biennial and um it kind of captures what i love about south dakota these farm <clears throat> excuse me these farms that 
are um, there's this chaotic beauty and a little bit of history of um, you know buildings that are new and and historical buildings a lot of times right next to each other and um, and then animals right in the mix and so I was excited to have this one in the exhibition um, and so I paint a lot of landscapes that are right around Brookings close to home and things that I see and just think are beautiful and interesting and um, have animals that are relating to each other in some way. But before I did that, for a long time, I was painting portraits, um, a lot of portraits of moms and babies, um, of animals and, um, and other people. And this is a portrait I did of our son and dog. And um, I put a lot of humor into <laughs> some of my paintings, especially ones I do for myself. And I know my humor is pretty dry, but I thought it was very funny designing the painting so that Otter is like this arrow pointing right out of the canvas. <laughs> and the most contrast is in this sort of empty space between them, um, but also, you know, having this sort of romantic portrayal of, um, of my son reading and, um, and hanging out with the dog. But, so we moved to South Dakota um, about eight years ago, and ever since then I've been trying to capture what I think is beautiful and unique about this place and different from the place that I came from. And so a lot of times I'll drive around town or um, walk around our rural area here and try to find um, beautiful little scenes that can just kind of pop out of nowhere. And this place, um, I was at the Brookings dump, which is on the southeast side of town and decided to go and see what was further out and went around this little hill and this beautiful oasis was there with these cows that were just like bathing beauties. And so it took a bunch of photos of them and then went back to the studio and tried to capture that sort of bucolic feeling. And this was another scene I came across. It's down by the southern entrance to I-29. And um, it, this one, again, I was playing around with the composition and having fun and um, kind of breaking a rule. I had always heard of, you know, not putting a small focal point right in the middle of your canvas. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna really do that. <laughs> So I put this little horse right in the middle and pointed everything I could at it. And um, it's, I, I think that's a lot of fun and it can come up with things that are interesting that that I, I wouldn't have done if I wasn't sort of playing. <laughs> um, and with this painting, I went outside and saw these clouds that looked so... Um, South Dakota, I guess they were very dimensional and beautiful and you don't see them really that often, but um, but so I went outside and, and I saw these clouds and I just thought, oh yay, and I jumped in the car and drove over to where there are some farms uh, to the west of our house and kind of captured some photos of the clouds as they changed and over different things. And, um, and then went back and combined some of those photos to, um, to come up with something that I thought said something about this area. Um, and then this was a, um, a herd of cows that lived on the pasture right by our house up until recently when they've been developing. And when I painted this, um, I realized that 
um, that I had started painting groupings of animals and the animals relating to each other and that that had become the major theme of most of my work and it was something that I really wanted to keep going with and exploring and I also was very enamored with the the really thick brush marks and wanted to keep playing with that and see how far I could take it and so I made 30 paintings that were kind of inspired by this one and then got to show them at um, Northern State and then at the Washington Pavilion, which was really wonderful. It was all about, you know, South Dakota and just the, how far you can see and also how intimate things can be with, with the animals and the landscape. And, um, so here I'll just flip through a couple of the paintings of, of South Dakota. These, these guys were hilarious. Um, they had escaped their <laughs> enclosure. And so we were driving through um, the pier area. And I'm sorry, I know I, <laughs> I pronounced that funny, but, <laughs> but um, but uh, the cows were out in the middle of the road and they, they crossed over and they were grazing in this ditch and the cow on the far left kept poking her head up and looking around like she was, <laughs> she was making sure that no one would come in and shoo them back. And um, I don't know, I just, I thought they were wonderful. And then the, the, this cowboy came along and shooed them all where they went and he seemed like he had a lot of experience with that. Like they probably escape pretty often. <laughs> and uh, so, and, and then um, there's also this wonderful bird life here that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting to find all these seagulls and pelicans here. And I'm honestly not sure if this is a photo I took or if this is based on photos from, um, a park right around Brookings, or if this is from Desmit, I saw them in both places and um, and took a whole bunch of source photos. But I'm just completely enamored by these guys, and and um, and keep trying to capture something about them, um, and I keep including people and kind of coming back to that idea of of capturing people and and something about their character and and so this is a, a more recent painting of this man working on his farm and I actually took the source photo of this man on his tractor in a parade in downtown Brook Brookings and he loved him <laughs> I just think he's so cool and um, I really wanted to paint him but I I didn't have something to say about the parade. I, I kind of wanted to say something about um, the way people talk about working a field and how it makes them feel. And so I wanted to explore that a little bit. Um, and so right now I'm working on a project of, um, painting people in masks and a, well almost a year ago when we started seeing people in masks I um I was hearing from my relatives that they like everybody where they were was wearing masks and I wanted to capture that and it took me a long time to come to grips with the fact that that's not what I see here and that's not my story to tell and so, um, so more recently, I've been really enjoying taking photos of, you know, what my story is of seeing this mixed group of, of people with masks and people without. And, and so I've been working on capturing that. And I've just recently started adding some more depth to my paintings, which I'm really excited about. Um, and 
these are my mom's chickens. She's she's moved out to the Midwest, so I, I uh, I've been capturing more of the the cows and and horses and chickens around, um, and doing a lot of demos, um, which is something that I've I've started doing because of um, just how the world has changed in the last year. I wanted to do something fun for my subscribers and the people that follow me and something relaxing and um and so i've um <laughs> i've been drawing with people and uh, and painting with people so yeah and so that's me so that, that's how <laughs> people can find me but yeah awesome thank you jesse yeah. yeah, that's funny. You you haven't done much Ella Prima then, because you do have such a painterly style, but not not a lot of thickness to that, thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, not a lot. Of, I thought I was painting kind of thickly, and then just recently I decided to really go for it and see if I could get a lot more depth and say, like, okay, I wasn't painting thickly yet. <laughs> 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 yeah, and pasta is something else, right? Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think with that, we'll pass it off to Karen. And Karen, did you, you want us to just share images from the folder? I think Carolyn's got that loaded up. So. Oh, and we might need Karen to unmute. Unmute. There we go. Okay. There. there we go. You can do that right away if you want to, but I could say some stuff first. Sure. Before, yeah. before we launch into that, maybe, and then I could speak more specifically about those images. That's but, good. Um, basically, uh, I, one difference between Jesse and I is that I've almost always lived in South Dakota. I grew up on a farm in Northeast South Dakota in Dade County, and the farm is just a part of me. I saw those landscapes from early on, and I think one of the reasons I really enjoy painting sheep is because one of my jobs on the farm was to feed bottle lambs. You get attached to them. Um, they, they follow you around like puppies. And even though you know that some of those older sheep can be kind of cantankerous, I, I really love the critters. <laughs> and uh, took care of the baby chicks. Um, I went to a uh, country school for two years before going into town school and in neither of those places was there an art teacher. So the art I did as a kid was on my own. Um, but I've always drawn and after I had paints I always painted and didn't know what I was doing but loved it. And then I went to Northern where I studied art and because I didn't really have a clue about what an artist would do I uh, studied art education and wound up teaching for 31 years with a break in between the two chunks of teaching. Um, but always tried to do some art on the side. And particularly, particularly after one of those break times was when we were living in Madison, South Dakota and kids were little, but they were old enough that I was able to take some classes just for the fun of it at DSU and had a couple of just wonderful teachers there, Connie Herring and Alan Fisher were there at the time that I was there. And um, I even did weaving just because it was something I could do finally at last and had a little more. But uh, when Connie first did a, a painting class and she would herself say she's not a painter, um, she's, she's a weaver and she creates these wonderful um, installations. Um, but she looked at me painting and said I was like a fish in water. I had done acrylics in college and never really did oils until that moment then, which is uh, a bit more than 30 years ago. And that's when I started to really kind of get an art career together. At, it was while we were living in Madison and in that community that I had my first art show and I entered my first jury exhibition and got in and sent a painting off to was South Carolina and got an honorable mention or something like that and and uh, just haven't stopped painting since. Um, so my first art show I called Ordinary Places and I think that that's what I still do is I like to paint, 
paint ordinary places, the, the, the beauty that's around us that we might not see. And I really, really love paint. Um, Jesse, I do think you had some thickness on your on your canvases there. I was just amazed when I started seeing Jesse's paintings. How could she show so much with so little paint? <laughs> but I, I love to really layer it on and I like to show contrast. My favorite thing is to get the really good light and dark contrast. And I like to, to, to model shadows with color. Um, I like the colors to be a little bit unexpected. Um, and uh, there we go. Why don't we take a look at the pictures and I can talk at those, about those a little bit. And I think the first one that comes up will be called Almost Home. And that is, um, that is one that, I, yeah, that is Almost Home. That is the road that leads up from the flat part and up the steep hill of the Coteau, the west edge of the Coteau. The farm I grew up on was just over that hill and over about three quarters of a mile. And that's that's where I grew up. That's the landscape that I saw. And uh, that's where I just learned to see the horizon. So go ahead and go to whatever is next. There's some sheep. Having some fun with color in this one. I love to mock, uh, hay bales are such fun because, because they're, I don't know, they just are. I've thought sometimes about doing a series that would say basic forms on the prairie or something because of those cylinders and, and, and the cones that you see some places, but I haven't done it yet. You may move on. Now, here's something different. I've painted, we uh, visited a place, a favorite place, Camp Judson. There's a trail from, um, from camp up to Horse Thief Lake there. And it's like, this is called Hike to Horse Thief Lake number three. To show you, I really truly do like to paint other things as well. And this was a, a really different thing to do for me. Um, and it's fun. I've done three in the series and I keep thinking I wanna put them all together, but they've sold. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I've got the images at least I can show you. See, I do things that are not, <laughs> that are not the very two. I don't remember what's next. Let's see what's next. Ah, yes. This was also taken near the farm that I grew up. Um, I called this one Prairie Creek and it really looks like that. And I like to put on that paint with thick brush strokes and, and uh, yeah, that's home. <laughs> you can go to the next one. Um, long so, uh, hay bales and long shadows, and just kind of what you see is what you get there. You can go on to the next one, and this is my one of my most different ones. This is sunflower field. That one was fun too. Was that the last one, perhaps, or is there one more? Yep, that was it. So I would talk to me just a little bit about process. Um, I've tried a little bit of plein air painting and it drives me crazy. I do it sometimes because I really enjoy hanging out with the artists, but to make a decision that fast and put it on a canvas that fast and to paint while the lights, you know, before the light changes and all of that and the wind and the bugs, um, what I really prefer to do is go to places like plein air paintings or any place outdoors and gather the photographs and take them home and decide what I like best and maybe take a little from here and a little from there and and draw a small sketch and then once I know I have it the way I want it I like to draw it out full size especially if it's got anything like buildings or anything that's got anything architectural in it because if I don't get angles right on the piece of paper it's not going to come out right on the painting and that would drive me buggy. Um, Almost always, I draw it up full size and then I and then I trace it from there and I start from there and I think I work in fairly traditional oil painting technique, although I haven't had a lot of classes in oil painting. So, but I work from dark to light and thin to thick and 
I love to get contrast in. Contrast matters so much to me. And that's, that's about it. You can save questions for me. Thanks, Karen. I also loved that when I came to work at the South Dakota Art Museum, I found out that you were my brother's art teacher at one point. So <laughs> I was. He was really yeah. little at the time. Yes. <laughs> a long time ago. It was fun. Um, so, okay, we'll pass it over to Paul. And Paul, we've got the same kind of folder of images, so let us know when you want to load those up for you. Oh, and we got to get you off mute, too. There we go. Hi. When you said casual, I might have taken you too seriously. I... Well, <laughs> be casual. Tell us about your Okay. Page. <laughs> um, well, and I yeah. don't know. Have you always worked in landscapes? Have you? I mean, we were talking about graphic novel a little bit, but I know farming's a part of your heritage too, a really important part. And didn't know if you did a different type of work before the landscape. Um, I guess uh, there was a time where I wanted to be a portrait painter, so I was oh. painting um, a lot of portraits. I had a, um, an aunt in Kansas City who studied with the artist that painted um, uh, Truman's uh, presidential official portrait. And I always thought that was really like pretty cool. And so, and she would have, you know, paintings around the house. And uh, so I thought that was something that I was, uh, I'd be interested in doing. I was pretty excited about um, you know, being a portrait painting painter for for a number of years sure. um but i yeah i don't know if anybody's i mean you know the last portrait i painted was probably um you know early 90s so <laughs> it's been a while um but um yeah i um i don't know i started i guess um yeah, i don't know maybe we should look at some of the slides I made some notes while everybody, while, um, you know, Jesse and Karen were speaking, but it's on a grocery list. So Works it could get me. confusing for everyone <laughs> if I go off that. Um, yeah, anyway, but I started, uh, you know, well, this is, this is a painting from, um, you know, it's fairly recent. It's the, it's in the pandemic show at the Western Heritage Center right now. And um, I, I didn't do a lot of painting in the last year um, compared to maybe, you know, what I'm usually up to. Uh, and when I did go into the studio, it just didn't seem to be, um, I don't know, like real meaningful. I mean, with everything going on, it just seemed kind of like, Hi. yeah, here I am in my studio uh, painting and, you know, people, are, there's people out there that have to go to work and they're worried about getting sick and there's riots in Minneapolis. But I did, um, so like when I did paint, what I ended up doing was I kind of came back to some, um, you know, when I first started landscape painting some, 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 you know, themes and places that I, I, had previously, you know, explored. So like um, this is a painting from imagination. It's a landscape painting. It's a painting from memory. Um, in my mind, I used to like, uh, I grew up on a farm also in southeastern South Dakota. And my dad, um, some of his, uh, the land he farmed was down um, along the Missouri, not the Missouri, the Vermilion River, um, river bottom. And so this was uh, the bottom ground. And so some of my earliest memories of hanging out with my dad and working are being on the bottom. And I really, uh, there was something about being on the bottom that I always thought was really cool. Um, you know, the land was perfectly flat, but then cut through it was the vermilion, you know, and the vermilion kind of meanders through there. There's a bridge every, you know, every mile. And, you know, those old rickety uh, country road bridges are also 
I always found to be really interesting. I think the county's gone through and replaced most of them, probably for the better. Um, but like, you know, you get down to the bottom, it always was, it's almost like in the summer, it'd be hotter, it'd be more humid. I mean, you just drive a few miles and the weather was different. Um, it was surrounded, you know, the, the farm ground was surrounded by a levee or a dike to keep out the, you know, to keep the, the vermilion from flooding. We always called it the Lodi River. I don't, it's not actually the Lodi, it's the Vermilion. It's in, it would run through Lodi Township. Um, and so, you know, also the name Lodi, I don't know. It just all like really stuck with me and it seemed kind of poetic and romantic mm -hmm. and, and pretty cool. So this is, I guess, like a comfort painting for me. This is the Lodi. As I remember it from a kid, um, this is the, you know, the trees that would line the levee. Um, and then, you know, I guess, uh, you know, the foreground takes up, you know, not exactly following the rule of thirds here, you know, and the, the painting, the foreground kind of creeps up into the upper half of the painting. So there's a lot of foreground. The horizon is far off, you know. Um, I guess as far, you know, maybe what was going through my mind was, you know, I don't know how long all this is gonna last, uh, but it's a ways out there. And when, you know, what we can see of the horizon, what lies beyond is obscured. Um, the clouds, you know, the sky is also cloudy, kind of obscured. Um, I don't know. Don't know what's going on. The colors are a little off. Everything's just off. Um, but um, anyway, so I really, uh, I'm glad the Heritage Center took this painting for their show because I was really happy with it um, when it was done. And I like the texture. I like uh, some of the random marks. I uh, think it's, uh, yeah for a pandemic painting, pretty happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then as far as like when I started um, drawing, I grew up on a farm um, and, you know, as I said, I guess, but uh, like my dad drew fairly well. So I had this aunt in Texas or in Kansas City that drew and painted. And my dad would also draw and um, so some of the, my first memories of being exposed to, exposed to artwork would be the comic books. Like my dad would buy, we would, on Sundays, we would go into Vermilion to get a Argus Leader or a Sioux City Journal because, you know, there was no newspaper delivery um, on Sunday. So, you know, we get the paper every week except Sunday. So. Um, we go into town and go to Monogram News or we go to Piggly Wiggly and, you know, there'd be the pile of uh, Sunday papers and then next to it would be the comic book rack. And, um, you know, dad would buy me usually a Western comic book and, um, you know, like uh, Kid Colt or Rawhide Kid or something like that. And we'd get home and he would read the paper and I would look through the comic book and then, you know, if there was time at some point later in the day, he would uh, read the comic book to me. So this was like, I was, you know, really young, um, couldn't read yet. And so like the first artwork I did was, um, I would, well, I mean, you know, I think I would do like uh, scenes from Westerns, you know, I would draw gunfights and I'd draw war scenes, you know, like kids, guys, you know, both, mostly boys, I suppose, at that time anyway, would draw of, you know, like uh, a landscape with tanks and, you know, I'd do stuff like that. And, um, and then at some point I started, mom had these steno pads around that she would keep track of farm stuff on, um, like when things were planted and, you know, and um, the fertilizer bills and whatever, all this stuff. 
And so I would take these steno pads and they were kind of long and narrow and I would divide them in half and then across. So I had six panels and I started filling these steno pads up with um, sequential artwork, um, not knowing that, you know, I don't know, not thinking about how difficult it was or whatever not thinking much about it. But um, anyway, I kind of forgot about all this until, um, I mean, just like after my mom died, well, actually after my dad died, we, you know, I started getting all this artwork and all these sketchbooks and artwork from when I was younger, you know, find, we'd find them in boxes. And so I ended up getting all this stuff back and um, so in one of the boxes, there was this pile of steno pads <laughs> with um, sequential artwork. And um, like I'd complete more or less like, well, yeah, I had forgotten that I used to do this. And so, um, and like, uh, I mean, over the last 30 years or so, you know, I get ideas for stories and I would write them down and think, well, I'm going to do a kid's book or I'm going to do um you know something a comic book or whatever and then like you know when my daughter was young and uh, i've got a lot of stories you know she'd ask me about things and sometimes they would turn into these rambling stories and i you know if they if i they amused me i would you know make a note um and but i would sit down with one of these stories and i would think it was almost impossible how could i you know i'm going to take these words and I have to put them with pictures and it just seemed like almost impossible and I found these steno pads and I started paging through them and it I was like I was already you know my 10 year old uh 10 11 12 year old self was already doing this and so something like just snapped loose in my head and um I guess you know when I was I do, I teach quite a few guitar lessons out here in the hills to, you know, help support myself. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, all that kind of, or at least in the beginning, you know, I went to Zoom lessons and, you know, that was okay with everybody for a while. But after a while, you know, people got tired of Zoom lessons. And, you know, pretty soon by June, I didn't have, you know, I had very few students and I had a lot more time on my hands than I normally do. Um, so I wrote a script and then I just started illustrating the script. And so, um, I'm like, I, you know, I don't, I haven't been able to work on it as much as I, you know, have, I did earlier, but I still, you know, get up early and I, I draw for a couple hours every morning. Um, and I'm like, I think I'm, I don't know, I was working on page 46, 47 of a hundred um early in the week so i don't know what i'm going to do with it when i'm when i get done but <laughs> it's kind of nice it's like kind of freed me in the studio too as far as painting i'm not um i don't seem to be censoring myself like maybe i feel like i have been for a while so um i don't know it's therapeutic if nothing else but when people ask me what i've been doing as far as artwork over the pandemic i kind of just say drawing a lot in what more specifically, I guess this is, I've been drawing, um, illustrating the script that I wrote, uh, wrote back in, um, you know, March, about a year ago, I suppose. Yeah, we can go on to the next one. Real Am quick. I talking too much? No, you're talking. <laughs> it's great. Paul. Real quick, before we move on from that one, I was going to ask you, I, I love seeing the draw comparison of the drawings to your paintings, which are really different processes. But are those ink washes? Is that done in ink then? Oh, no, actually, they're on my iPad. I use oh, Procreate. Okay. Cool. But I spend a lot of time working with the drawings so they don't look so digital. Yeah, they don't. They really look like they could be ink drawings with washes. That's and awesome. I've did you know created some of my own um, brushes mm -hmm. in uh, you know procreate just in pencils and whatever okay so that they do look in my mind in yeah uh, more like uh, traditional artwork yeah 
Oh yeah, and this is just uh, uh, Jody or Carolyn asked for an Instagram, um, you know, account, and I didn't have one, so my daughter took this picture, and this is my Instagram <laughs> photo or my, you know, icon or whatever. And this is just uh, me sitting in front of a, a larger canvas. It's actually cropped. There's more on either side, above and below. Um, it's from, well, I was working on it um, for the show at the Pavilion, you know, three, four years ago, and I didn't get it done in time. And um, I don't know if it's done yet. I'm still probably going to fiddle with it. But um, yeah, we can go on. Uh, boy, yeah, I should have put these in some kind of order. This is a real, like, very recent painting. Like, I was probably took this photo. I was working on it earlier in the week. And, but, um, I, uh, I went to school at Black Hill State. And, uh, I mean, I would go back and forth between BH and USD. And, um, I don't know. I still hang out with Jeff Freeman when I'm back in Vermilion, and this is kind of a, a painting that was just inspired by uh, the talks that I have with Jeff when I'm back. Um, I can see Jeff in that painting. And this is a painting in my new studio. It's, I don't know, almost four foot by five foot, I think. It, this is a, um, that same, another thing I've been doing the last year, well, actually, I just got this, we just moved into a new place in Spearfish, and I actually have, like, a nice, like, dedicated studio space now with good light, some windows. Um, it's detached from the house, so I can use as much stinky oil paint as I feel like and mix in, <laughs> mix whatever I feel like mixing in with it. Um, but um, this was uh, a painting that was in the show at uh, at the pavilion. I, I think I, I don't know if I sold three or four out of the show. I sold, but the, well, the paintings that I didn't sell, uh, most of them were damaged on the trip back to uh, back to the Black Hills. I didn't, um, I thought I packed them just as well, but I was, uh, I hit a patch of um, highway or pat, like on 81, there was this uh, patch that was, I ended up with this washboard thing going on and I had a trailer and I could, I mean, I don't know, it was pretty bad. But the paintings, the surfaces were abraded and um, down to the, not down to the canvas, fortunately, but down to the gesso, uh, down to the sizing. And so I've been hanging onto these paintings for three or four years because I couldn't, I just couldn't bring myself to, you know, um, you know, repair them, bring them back. But what's kind of happened is that I've been working on them and they've sort of turned into new paintings. Um, and so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with them. They're, um, uh, most of them, can we go to the next one? Hopefully it's something that's related. <laughs> um, but uh, like, this is one of them. Um, this is, I don't know. Can you see the cursor? Does that show up? This painting, this darker painting on the left hand of the screen, um, yeah, is one. You know, the one in the middle is kind of an earlier prototype, maybe, of this idea. But they're all sort of paintings. Um, I had this uh, title that I really liked called Levitating Near a Stock Pond. And so I'm kind of like, when I, I title my paintings, I usually have like three or four, you know, ideas. And then I kind of string them together mm -hmm. somehow in a way that makes sense and to me anyway describes the painting and um like uh you know i'm always uh you know i i grew up on a farm you know and i feel this attachment to the south dakota landscape and i mean um 
lately I've sort of been thinking about it in a way where, I mean, like I was the oldest boy in a farm family. So, I mean, like I was always made to feel responsible, you know, for the farm. I was basically, you know, told that, <laughs> you know, this is your deal, man. You know, you, you need to, you know, uh, be here and you need to um, help out. And this is, this is a big part of who you are. And so like, I mean, and I, I did really love being on the farm. I mean, I love, I, I really love being outside, but there was always this thing like, is this, was this really a choice for me or not? And like some of the titles um, that I've, I've, I'm kind of using deal with, uh, you know, like Stockholm syndrome is part of the title. Um, like canopy is another title. I mean, you know, I mean, there's something really like life and, you know, I mean, you see it from a lot of, with a lot of the artwork, uh, that comes out of South Dakota. I mean, it's, it really is a beautiful place to live, whether, you know, your West River or East River. I know, um, like I, uh, my last, uh, time on the farm, I, you know, I was done with school again. I had, I don't know what I had finished up, you know, at that point, but I was going back in, in the spring to help plant as I would often do you know, pretty much every year, I'd, you know, quit whatever job I was working in, whatever band I was in and whatever, and go back to work. And um, I remember I was really not too happy about going back that year. Um, but I'd left Spearfish and they had this crazy April br blizzard, you know, and it was, there was like two feet of snow on the ground. <laughs> and I mean, it was beautiful, but at that point, you know, I was sick of snow. And uh, I was packed up, drove across the state and I got to the Turkey Valley. You know, I got around Irene and between Irene and Freeman and everything was turning green and people were getting in the field. And um, it was just so lush and beautiful. And uh, I remember thinking, you know, well, this isn't, this isn't so bad. And actually that's kind of when I started painting landscapes too, it was about the same time. Um, you know, there's a lot of hurry up and wait on the farm. So I always had sketchbooks and uh, that I'd haul around with me. Yeah, anyway, this is also my new studio, kind of a, from a few weeks ago. It's, it's a lot messier now. This is a painting that's in the community art show in Spearfish. And it is a, um, yeah, kind of an East River landscape, sunset sort of painting. This is a painting that's been accepted into the um, proof of life show at the doll. Um, this um, kind of is more in the line of what I've been working on the last, you know, seven, eight years. There's lots of texture, there's iron filings and um, topsoil mixed in with the paint. So you, I don't know if you can really see it from this image, but there is a lot of texture. The paint's pretty thick. Um, and I apply the paint, you know, with, uh, the sides of mat board, pieces of cardboard, um, brushes, palette knife, kind of whatever I can find. Sometimes it's thick, sometimes it's thin. Um, and um, I kind of like, for a lot of these, for a while, I mean, uh, the horizon line kind of disappeared and um, I don't know, those are actually some of my favorite paintings. They're really just about texture. And they're about the materials, about the topsoil and the iron filings. And sometimes I would bury uh, small magnets in the paint. Um, you know, stuff like that I found some meaning in. Um, but I don't know, painters gotta paint. I like to draw. Um, and I, so I, I kind of introduced a heart, you know, horizon line. 
And then some of these geometric sort of shapes, I've sort of been thinking of the idea of, um, you know, how rural South Dakota, you know, is used as like a machine for production. I mean, because one of the startling things, like when you drive uh, from the western part of the state into the eastern part of the state, is while the western half may be ag land, you know, largely, you know, there's a lot of grazing and, you know, there are some, you know, sunflowers and hay and whatever. But when you get uh, west and you start seeing the row crops and you see these perfect you know, rows of corn, soybeans, you know, whatever. I mean, there's, the landscape takes on this kind of mechanical um, look, you know, like, and the idea that, you know, the landscape is just this massive machine that's producing uh, soybeans and, uh, you know, and corn and it's producing like these huge amounts. I mean, huge amounts that it would, you know, it could never possibly produce without, um, you know, the introduction of chemicals. And, um, you know, now I mean like GPS, I mean, it's just like, it's almost like the machine, you know, the land is some sort of weird cyborg. Um, you know, it's not even like, there's nothing really natural about it anymore. And so I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm still sort of working all this out, but um, that's sort of like these hard geometric bits that are in the painting. That's kind of what uh, that represents to me. And then also the iron filings. And uh, depending on where I get my topsoil, sometimes I'll mix turpentine with it and I can smell uh, the... <laughs> This probably isn't good, but I mean, you know, like different oil paints have different smells. You know, I know what Prussian blue smells like. I know what, you know, some of the greens have this chemical smell, but like that topsoil, wow, man, there is something crazy in it. And um, uh, that's why I kind of had to like back off on this sort of painting because of the house, I was creating an unsafe environment for myself and my family, but Anyway, once it's dry, it's, it's I, I assume it's okay. I hope. Anyway, yeah, I can talk about the next one. Or we can quit. I'm probably talked over my time. And then this kind of goes back to that whole idea of the, you know, the paintings, the Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know, this is not, it looks like there's some more A or something on the slide that isn't actually in the painting. The, the ellipses, the circles are actually like smoother than they appear on the screen. Um, but this is one of those canopy, um, I don't know exactly what the title will be, Stockholm Syndrome, I Missed the Cold War. Oh, did I mention, yeah, I missed the Cold War as part of this whole thing too. Um, Paul, I was gonna ask you, and then we probably should open it up to um, yeah. questions from anybody else, but um. um do you, so we know Jesse and Karen will take a lot of photographs as re reference material. And I know you said that one painting was pretty much entirely imag imaginary. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that, whether you're using photographic references or at this point you're kind of re making reiterations of forms that you've seen or imagined. Um, well, I, I actually have a a nice Canon camera, a DSLR that I love. And I take a lot of pictures, but um, like I don't, I seldom use them. Oh, I like when I, years ago, I would use them for photo reference. Like when I was, I wanted like a real sense of like a specific place. Um, but lately that hasn't been so important to me. Like. You know, I mean, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of the paintings are maybe um, West or East River, you know, somewhere in South Dakota, but they're not all, you know, necessarily about like a specific place. So I, I don't really, I take a lot of pictures. A lot of the pictures I take, um, I mean, I kind of got into this, it's called 
intentional camera movement, this ICM thing. And so I take a lot of blurry, I like taking blurry pictures with really long exposures. Um, yeah, those photographs do kind of have a similar quality to your paintings, really. But yeah, so I mean, I kind of do stuff like that, but I don't know if they're any good or not, so I don't really show them much, if at all. I've seen them yeah. on Facebook, they're good. Okay. <laughs> cool, I'll do more. <laughs> yeah, it does have a po poetic painterly quality even to the photographs, really, yeah. yeah. But I mean, with that said, I like to get my tripod out sometimes and take something that's really, but anyway. Sure. Well, we can open it. If anybody's got questions for any of the artists, feel free to put them in the chat or even potentially unmute yourself. But I think we can filter them from the chat. Do we have anything over there yet, Carolyn? You know, we've got, yeah, a lot of I love this and this right. is great. And but I'm looking for some questions. Yeah. And while we're waiting for any to come through, thank you three for being our our first run of biennial artists to talk to over the cocktail hour. So it's always, you know, the, the, the future talks, they'll be able to look back and see, okay, that's how that went. So you're, yeah, you're brave. Um, thank you so much. We'll get better. Huh? There we go. <laughs> I will say that, you know, as I was organizing these, the artists that were willing to come and share with us into groups, there are several landscape groups. So we've got a set of la surreal landscape artists. We've got photographic landscapes. Um, next week, we'll hear from a, a foursome who have um, pr kind of traditional landscapes, but not, not really, but they're more sunset to sunrise and moonlight. Um, so it was fun to see. I mean, there's so much, I think, in this state. Obviously, the land is such a huge influence on so many artists, but there really is such a variety of approaches to painting the land. It's fun to see the differences. And like I said, all you, you three tend to, you've got that common thread, but such distinct styles, which I absolutely love. Um, so I hope it was fun to see you all together and hear from you all together. May I just say thank you so very, very much to be a part of this. Um, it's, it's just great to be a part of it. Yeah, so well, I'm, so. I'm, and I want to always thank all of the artists and, and you three, especially for submitting to that show too, because I think it is such a important survey every couple of years to see what's happening in the state mm -hmm. and share that with everybody across the state. I will remind everybody that it's on view at the South Dakota Art Museum through June 13th. And then it travels for about a year. So we opened in March. It'll go from here to the Washington Pavilion um, into the fall. And then the University Art Galleries at USD will have it for about a month in the fall. And then it'll move to the Dahl Art Center and wrap up about a year from when it started in March of 2022. <clears throat> um, so check it out at any of those venues over the year that it travels. Come and check it out at ours. I always say that I do the best job. So come see how <laughs> I designed it. Not to brag or anything. That's but. true, yeah. <laughs> we love doing the show. The, um, first, This is the first year we've got the catalog available to view online. Um, and also the price list is online. So if you can't get in person, you can check it out before. Um, and then two, we were able to, and I, this may be a, a, a fortunate uh, result of the pandemic, the printing costs were really low. So we've got quite a few copies of the catalogs available. So if you come to the, yeah, if you come check out the show, there'll be some free catalogs there for you. So come get a hard copy in person. Do come check it out and grab a catalog and enjoy all the great art that is happening here and now. <laughs> yeah. And if there's no other questions, we'll probably just wrap it up and thank you all for coming. We can go finish our drinks and have some dinner. And do make sure we'll be, um, I posted the link to the page where we'll post the registration information for next week's program, which I'll get done quickly. Um, but you will need to register each time. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's our way of abiding by university rules. And um, there, you'll be able to see who's speaking each week and what the kind of what the theme that Jody saw was. And uh, uh, we'll we'll definitely looking look forward to seeing you. And if uh, yeah, if you do have questions, 
um, feel free to just shoot us an email and we can get it out to, to Paul or Karen or Jesse or whomever. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you so everybody. much. This has been really fun. I'm Betty from Aberdeen this evening. First time to be part of this group. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm yeah, happy thanks to much. have you. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Take care. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.